Hi, this is Ross Buecher from Controlman Icon, and in this video we're going to take a look at all the different ways that you can capture images with your Nikon camera with using Controlman Icon. We're just going to lightly step through those ways uh, during this video. Well, the first way you can capture an image with Controlman Icon is, you know, you connect to Controlman Icon and then you press the shutter button on the actual camera body. So I'm not going to click on anything on the computer, I'm just pressing the button on the body. I'm going to do that now. And you can see the image that has been captured. Now I'll give it another one, just like that. Now you can do this when your camera is not in live view. And when you are in live view, you can use other methods within Control My Icon to trigger the shutter. Okay, now within the program itself, you can click on shoot, or you can click on AF and shoot, and that'll take autofocus first. Now you can use keyboard shortcuts. We go up here to keyboard shortcuts. We have a separate video on this. You can set up different keyboard keys to cause it to shoot. And here I'll set up the spacebar to shoot. And I'll hit spacebar on my keyboard now and it shoots. So you don't have to have your hand on the mouse to be able to shoot. You can also use a PowerPoint remote. And it's just like a keyboard shortcut and you just put a check mark here. This can be a wired or a wireless PowerPoint remote and you just press a button on the remote. It activates a mapped key which is connected to one of the commands and you can have it shoot or connect or disconnect or many of these different options. You can also capture an image by using a web trigger. This allows you to take a shot using a web browser. Here I'll just shoot. And this web browser could be on your computer, across your network on another computer, or even on a smartphone, providing it can see the Control My Icon computer over the network. So another great way to have a remote. And we can have a sound trigger. And here we just hook up to a microphone. Now I'll use the microphone that I have right now that I'm talking into, and you can see my voice there. I just made a loud noise and it detected that the intensity of the sound went over a threshold and triggered the shutter. We can also capture an image using a speech trigger. How we just speak the command. Shoot. So that really comes in handy if you need to be moving around lighting or maybe holding on to the lights as you're taking a shot. You just need a microphone and you're able to control your camera. We can also use fidget triggers and fidget triggers use a robotic sensor such as a humidity or a voltage or a touch or vibration sensor um, connected to an interface board which connects through a USB cable to your computer. And uh, these are pretty inexpensive electronic sensors, and these can also allow you to trigger the capturing of an image control an icon. You can use a live view motion trigger. I'm just going to go uh, into live view here for a moment, and I'm going to close my image browser. And I'll focus. Then the motion trigger here. I can tell Control My Nikon to trigger the shutter if it detects any motion within this target. And I'll activate it now. Okay, I'm going to disable that. Now we can also capture images using bracketing. So I'll just go up to the trigger menu here, down to bracketing, and you can set any amount of shots that you like here. And you could just select the exposures you'd like for each shot. And let's say I would like to start off with 110, then do a 120, then 130. So now it's going to take three shots of varying exposures. And you can use this to create an HDR image. Let's see how else we can capture images and control an icon. You can also use the intervalometer, and this is the type of thing you would use to capture the images necessary for a time-lapse video. 
and we'll say that we'll just start it when we press the start button and every five seconds we'll take an image and I'll just stop it after we capture several. Okay, let's take a look at some other ways to capture images. We can also use a script. And in this case, I have a script that is going to repeat three times the actions of shooting and pausing. And another way we can capture images is to use batch shooting. Now this is a type of thing that we'd use if you had high volume shooting, like if you're a, if you're a product photographer or doing say a photography for a class of students, you can go down to batch shooting and enter a batch ID here. And then activate this. And now you could take a series of images and this information will be affixed to the file name or the folder name or even the metadata. So I'll take a shot and you can just keep on shooting. Now, when you're taking shots, most of these settings that you need to make are right here in the settings tab. So you can set the common functions that you set very often on a camera, such as the shutter speed and aperture and compensation and so on. They're all right here. And uh, there's a lot of other functions in the camera that you can set, you know, like active delighting or different timers and things like that. But those are so seldom set that we do not include that functionality in Control My Icon. You could still set those on the camera menu. We also have continuous shooting here. You just need to set the amount of shots you want and then continuous mode on the body itself. Just set the switch. And if you have a D4 or D800, you can even use bulb shooting here. These images here are saved under the file names and folders that you set here. And you can set different tags as well to be included in the metadata keywords. Now by default, you'll be saving your images to computer only. And some Nikon cameras have the ability while tethered to save to the card or the card and computer. You can review your captured images on the built-in image browser like this. And you just double click on the image and it brings it up full screen. And there's some other options here to examine your image closely, including histograms and other exposure tools. or you could still view your images in an external image browser such as Adobe Bridge or Windows Explorer or ACDC or whatever you like. So that's it. That's how you capture and view images in Control My Icon. It's just a very brief overview. If you take a look at the help for this, uh, it's available here under the help menu, capturing images, and it talks about all the different ways that we just talked about on capturing images. And for each one of these help topics, there's also a video tutorial. Happy tethering.